Hi, Cat here on behalf of Lightweight Digital. In today's quick video, I'm going to demonstrate something that some people might refer to as light linking in new and advanced versions of competing software. This is something that we've had for decades in Lightwave, and it's referred to something else, which is light exclusions or objects exclusions from light. There are two main areas that you can do this in Lightwave, where, for example, I want one of these balls to not be casting a shadow or have a different light casting a shadow a different direction without affecting any of the other objects. Um, the first one is to do it in the lights properties panel under objects and say I don't want this particular light to affect this blue ball so I can simply deactivate it. Now maybe I want the key light or another copy of the key light that I've got in my scene to affect that ball in a different way so it's casting a shadow in an opposite direction. So I've got another one here that's essentially just a copy of the first. So I'm going to turn this one on and you can see that the shadows are now going a different direction as I pre-rotated it. So to get the effect that I want, I am going to essentially just disable these other two balls from seeing that light. So now we've got a shadow going this way and a shadow going this way. So it's effectively now independent. Now it's still affecting the box, so the scene's going to be a little bit brighter, but there are some other things that we can do here that'll help that out. In the Objects Properties panel, there is a tab here called Lights, and we can tell any of these lights to exclude themselves from being considered as a source for lighting on that object. Not only that, we get advanced lighting properties such as radiosity and caustics, which are not available on an independent light, that we can turn off as well. So I can turn off the environment light from being seen by the cove. I can turn off the box from being seen by the first key light and only being impacted by the second key light that I've got. Very cool stuff. Now, let's take that a little bit further. Here we have an orange box, which is currently disabled from being visible in the scene. I'm going to enable it, and we'll see that it's here in the scene. Uh, it's not looking too pretty, because at the moment, it needs to be told, hey, you need to consider all the lights, including radiosity. Now, I've got this shadow with these two lights, so I'm going to just turn one of these lights off. All right. And we can see that it's casting a perfectly you know, normal shadow for it being a chamfered box. Under appearance though, or under the render tab, pardon me, we can tell this box to be hidden from camera. So now it's hidden from camera, but it's casting a shadow that's in the shape of the box onto the cove. However, it's effectively hiding this ball because it's casting a shadow on itself or onto the ball and blocking out. So with the second key light, we can tell that box to no longer evaluate lighting coming from the second key light, and now it will cast. Now there are a couple of other tricks in here that you can do that are quite handy. We'll go and change this particular light so that it's no longer casting a shadow that's just, you know, a shadow that's um, kind of a darker version of um, you know, white or a brighter version of black. And we can change the shadow color for that light. Because this object is only going to be evaluated by that light, we can change the color for its shadow. And it shouldn't affect anything else unless it's selected. So let's turn off the cove. So now that's turned off, but because the cove is part of what needs to receive the shadow, there you go. You can of course mix these or completely turn them off. Let's just turn this back to on, let's change the color, something more dramatic. 
So if you've ever wanted to colorize shadows, you can do that very easily in LightWave, and you can keep it excluded from other objects. So let's say this is our key light for the red. We'll rename this. Okay. And we'll go into the basic tab, or the object tab, and we'll exclude everything with the exception of the cove and the red ball. Okay. And we can change the shadow of this to be red. So now this ball is casting a red shadow and the cove is casting a red shadow onto itself combined with the orange that we had over here. Anytime you want, you can turn off any of these lights in the scene editor. And you can even split lights in half so that they will only have certain properties impacting your scene. Just to demonstrate this, I'm going to delete this one key light here. And we're going to go and rename this one. So we'll call this key light diffuse because that's the only property we're going to have it contribute. We'll turn the shadow back to black. Okay. And we're going to turn off specular. Okay. So now there's no specularity from this light bouncing back at us from the surface of the objects. Okay. We still have the environment light on. If we turn that off, you'd see what you get. And this of course is reflecting whatever it sees in the scene on that surface, but we'll just turn that environment light back on and then we'll go and clone this diffuse light and we'll call it spec. And we'll have it just affect specularity, specularity. And we can do neat tricks like drive that specularity way up there without brightening the contribution of the diffuse from that scene. And if you want to get really tricky about it, you can set up little rigs that will allow you to drive the uh, lighting properties such as this, including volumetric intensity or the angle of a distant light or any other light property that has an envelope on it to a null and use a plugin called Channel Follower in the graph editor and do all kinds of really, really interesting light board techniques for lighting your scenes. All right, that's the end of our quick demo. Thank you very much for watching.